Um, so, a while ago, I did a pretty crummy video using Oliver here uh, to show just how to groom at home. And it came to my attention that some people were using it to try to learn how to show groom. So I thought this time, maybe I would do it properly, show you how to show groom. I'm not going to get into crazy detail, but I'll show you certain techniques. I used Oliver here because he grows fur like it's his primary job. Uh, we also kept a collar on him for a while, so he would grow some collar neck. Typically I don't collar my dogs um, because it's such a pain to work with. Um, but I wanted to show how to reduce what that looks like. Um, he's got a, a lot of coat. One of the reasons I wanted to use him is he has a couple things about his coat that are similar to what you would find on a litter dog. Um, he likes to grow a mohawk. He also has incredibly fluffy ears. Um, so that can be difficult to figure out what to do with these ears when they're that furry. Um, and uh, th there are some cheats I can show you. So um, I'll try to adjust the camera so we can show what we're doing. Um, First off, what I like to do is start with the neck. Um, it's one of the easiest places to just get rid of a large portion of this fur um, and make them just look a lot neater. So I like to start there. Um, I'll try to turn him around so we can show you. Okay. So what we like to do here is find the tip of the breastbone. You're going to start about one or two fingers up and you're going to make a V. You're kind of going to follow the bottom of the ear here and V down and V down here. Um, it can be easier to take the noose off if you have a dog that is willing to do so. I like to use a 7FC blade or a 7F blade. I find it um, doesn't get too uh, too close to the skin, but it's it is very short, perfect for doing the neck and walking right into the show ring, and it lasts a little while depending on how fast your dog's coat grows. You're gonna make first one big sweep all the way up. You can see right there. Then I like to take it another sweep, kind of turning it a little bit. We're still not down over here, but we'll come back to it. Okay. So the majority of it's off, but we're still not at that line of the ear. Uh, what I like to do is kind of pull that ear back. Um, you can kind of dig your fur, dig, the, dig it in just a little bit, and you're going to kind of go at an angle and try to hit that edge where the fur changes direction, and that's where you're going to do it, okay? Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I do go down the opposite direction on that last one just for the initial, and it's a little easier. Um, but to clean it up, because the fur goes in multiple directions, I might change how I'm holding my clippers. Now I realize not every dog is going to be this easy to do next, especially if they're not used to it. But with time, they do get used to it. Um, all this right here, we take off. It's really easy to just take off with the clippers. One straight down. I know that looks like I've gone into the cheek a little bit. I have. But you can see the ear covers it. Okay. See, he's significantly nicer. Hopefully you were able to 
see that. I know the lighting's not not great. Let's see if we can get a close up here. Okay. Now I'll try to bring it up because now that we've got the bulk of the of the neck done, we can start working on some of the other areas. Your dog may or may not need this, but I use a very fluffy dog in order to show this. Um, as I said, he does like to grow a mohawk like a lot of liver dogs do. What I like to do, it's just easier um, at least to get the bulk of it off, is comb it forward like this, same blade, and be very careful that when you clip, you're not digging in. You don't want to have an angle here. You want to just go flat. So, you're not taking much off. Do it again. don't want to look like it's been clippered. As you can see, now he looks like he's never had a mohawk. Uh, you can, if it looks a little choppy to you, you can use um, a stripping comb or um, maybe some thinning shears to try to smooth it out. But if, as long as you haven't dug in, it shouldn't, it shouldn't look weird, okay? Also, he's got crazy furry ears and if I was to sit here, and use a stripping comb on them, I would be here for 10 years. His fur grows faster than I'll be able to strip it. So, same thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna comb it down. Now you should have a little bit more fur on the top than you do on the bottom. He kind of does that naturally, but he's got a lot of fur there. Do not dig in. You're going to start, you're going to put the blade about even at the top of the ear because you don't want to do the top of it. And just bring it down. Now I know it still looks furry probably on camera, but this isn't bad at all. Um, typically you are going to do a little bit more work to it past the clippers because it can look a little choppy, especially on some dots. But you're going to start there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your straight shears or curved shears. You can use whichever you feel more comfortable with. What you're going to do is you're going to pull the ear and you're going to cut along what we call the leather of the ear. Um, you don't want to cut the ear itself, so be kind of careful. You're just evening out the fur and bringing it down like that. Um, on this side, you don't want to go too far up, so what I like to do is... Hey, help me out here, buddy. Oliver. What I like to do is just come up here and we go over here. Over. I'm just doing it kind of at an angle. You don't want to go all the way up. You want to leave a little bit of that cute little fuzz there. But you can take this bit off. Okay. Now we've got all this greasy fuzz right here. If you can see, all this can just go away. You take your shears, it just drop it off. Okay, it'll be nice, nice neat ear. Even it out a little bit. Don't want to do too, too much with the straight shears, but you can take, once again, the bulk of it off. Okay. Um, this is one of my preferred stripping combs. It's actually a blade, it's a razor blade. It's great for ears. You can 
just you don't want to dig in too much. Short strokes, okay? Very short strokes. You don't want to cause what we call a hole in the dog's coat. Right? I'm just trying to even things out. His ear doesn't look that bad here, but I just wanted to show you the technique. All right? So we'll go ahead and do that other side. And then we'll continue moving on. As you can see, he's already looking a lot cleaner. What a good boy. Oliver, incidentally, is an older boy. He's eight. Not really shown anymore. Once in a blue moon. He was one of my, he was actually my second champion. What a good boy. Occasionally you have to remove the second dog's worth of fur. Okay. Okay. Alright, so we're going to move this back. Hopefully we'll have some better lighting. Alright, so for this part you really do want your dog's head up, you don't want to choke them of course. You should be able to fit a finger or two in between there fairly comfortably. Uh, hopefully your dog is not pulling and yanking. Before you make any cuts you always, always want to brush forward, okay? Always, always, always. So right now we're just working on getting the bulk of it off. And some of that includes this, because clearly we have shaved and then long fur here. With this, we're going to use thinning shears. I used to like to I like to use a 40 tooth or a 32 tooth blade. Um, just the finer the better. Now and you want to make sure they're nice and sharp. What you want to do, yeah, I'll stop. If you can pull your ear back. Just lay your scissors right along the edge. And thinning shears are not meant to cut like straight shears are. Um, so your motion is a little bit of an upward pull. It's not, you're not, you're not gonna sit here and, and chop, 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 chop. You're gonna pull it, okay? They're me it's meant as a, a blending tool. They do cut very well but they're supposed to blend. Now, so we get the majority of that, okay? It's better. We have more to do. Okay. We can go at different <gasps> angles. There's a lot of fluff here. We'll be taking care of that next. Find it easier to kind of work at the front of the dog and work my way back. Okay. Now, another tool that you're going to need, especially if you have a dog like this, that has a lot of fur, or you have a dog that has a collar neck like he does at the moment, you're going to want a comb, a nice metal comb. There's two sides, there's the fine side and the coarse side. We're going to be using the coarse side. We're pretty much never going to be using the fine side unless we're just combing the dog. So this is a technique called back combing. 
back combing basically gives you the ability to blend the fur while taking very little off and just make it lay smoother. Okay, come on, Fluffs. He's a little bored by this. He doesn't know why I'm talking. So all this right here, when you back home, you want to back home before you take the scissors. Then you're going to take your thinners, and you're really only going to tip it. And you're you're not going to you're going to move your comb as you go. All right. Now I didn't take that much off, but already it's looking a little less fluffy. So you're going to go at different angles, whatever looks like it needs to come off. You might only be tipping at the very top. You might need to go a little deeper. It just depends on how the fur is laying. That, unfortunately, is just something you have to get a feel for. Okay, you can see that it's already laying a lot nicer. And I can stop taking that much off. Okay, it's very quick motions. Your, your comb should be in movement the whole time. You should never sit in one spot while you're back combing. All right. So that's already significantly neater. We're also going to take these thinners, come down just a little bit, right in this spot, and kind of pull it. Because right here is this beautiful shoulder, and we really want to show this really lovely layback here. Um, he's got very nice return of arm. And you want to show that off. You don't want to fill it with all this fur too much. So you want to take it down just a little bit more right here, just to show the transition between shoulder and fore chest. Okay. There we go. That's a lot better. We're going to do a lot more here. Believe it or not, taking it down here is going to make a huge difference. But let's see if we can deal with this, this collar neck here. We're going to use the same technique with the thinning shears and the comb using the back combing technique. This can be very difficult. You don't want to just take it all down. It's not going to look right. We're going to try to make this a nicer transition. In the Brittany, a judge is not supposed to penalize you for having a collar neck because it's very common in our breed for dogs to be wearing collars a lot because they're in the field. However, it doesn't hurt to try to make it a nicer looking transition. So we're going to come up from the back just tip. You don't want to do too much with the collar neck because you're, it's, you're, you don't want to overdo it. It's really easy to take too much fur off. Okay, we want to come straight in the back. We're going to go up further than you think is necessary because what you need to do is have this fur blend into this fur. So if you just go to this point, you're not getting these pieces of fur you have to go further. Never do more than two, two swipes without combing it back forward so you can see where you're at. The more you do, the more you comb forward, to make sure that you haven't done too much. I do recommend if you're going to be back combing like this, do it at least four to five days before a show so it looks more natural, if not a few weeks prior. That way it has a chance to grow back a little bit nicer. Um, you can do it the day of the show, but it's just going to look a little bit better if you do it before because we are bringing it down. It's okay if he's sitting because I'm just trying to get this transition nicer. As you can see, it's already coming along. 